Hello and welcome to the Smurd P video. And today we are looking at X Men issue 11, uh, Empire uh, tie in issue, and Path to X of Swords, which is uh, coming out next month. And I will be reviewing all the crossover from start to finish. Now, the issue begins in the Arcro Zone. <laughs> And um, I can't remember if she was female or male, but she, she arrived in um, issue two, if I remember correctly. And um, it's just not been mentioned since, unless she's mentioned in one of the other X comics. Anyway, the, the young kids are um, trying to suss her out and they're having a chat and seeing what, what he or she is doing, whether they're meditating or, hey, that looks like a game. So it's a game. And... Um, one that is a test, like a trial. And um, Santo, being naive Santo, decides to join it, even though he's told that you will not leave until the game ends. <laughs> Which is... And he's just like, yeah, okay, I'll play. I want to play. Um, even, you know, it's uh, quite that simple. So anyway, it starts uh, changing into like the shape of a little little Santo. Which is um, cool, and you can see it feels like Jumanji, man, where um, where they they do stuff and then stuff goes on. Anyway, something unconscious happens. These missiles are fine, firing towards Krakon, and um, well, that's ominous. And I'm not sure if that's what the game's like. <laughs> like I said, it feels like Jumanji. So anyway, this is an Empire crossover. If you're not reading Empire. Well, I'm certainly not. The Korean Skull Empires of United under Emperor Hulkling. Not sure when that happened. I loved them in Young Avengers. And they find a common enemy. To fight a common enemy. The Celestial Messiah. Cool? Cool? Not sure how that's pronounced. However, the fight on the moon with um, Vulcan has drawn their attention to Earth and Krakon. So, they're on their way. Um, we get the usual spread here, which is very nice. I like how this is done. Uh, all the talented people that work on this issue. One war, one mutant. I like that. Very, very interesting. And then we get a report to the Quiet Council from the Captain Commander. And uh, this is around proposals. Um, one about making the sphere above the airspace bigger. One around mutant training. Not enough mutants are training. And they shouldn't have to, but we always know that they still need to. And, um, I'm trying to think, uh, resurrection protocols, other protocols, enhanced combat techniques. And they use Magneto as an example, but there's lots of different combos, and they got 28 offensive and 12 defensive. Now, oh, sorry, this bit was around evacuation off the island, um, if they had to. And these are great things. Um, I'm, I'm a facilities manager. I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned that. So well, a lot of these things make sense to me about having plans in place to protect the people in your building, or in this case, the island. Um, evacuating being a very important one. How do we get these guys out alive if something goes wrong? And how do we prevent these things from happening? So preventative maintenance in my case, or measures, or plans, tests, etc. In this time, exactly the same. Training mutants. Um, let's put up this extra barrier because that will stop people from coming in our airspace and dropping in. Perfect stuff, um, and I felt really uh, communed with that, <laughs> doing what I do. Okay, so Exodus is uh, leading some sort of, it feels like a Bible study, and he asks uh, the children, are you afraid? Um, it's important that we don't lie to each other when we tell the truth, and uh, this one down here, who I thought was Quentin, is not Quentin, uh, says he's not, and he says, why is that? Because... They're coming back. The five are working hard, and we we always come up. So we don't we don't fear death. We fear men, and I was like them. Um, and he says, just look at the world they've made. And uh, this kid asks, well, why don't we stop them? And he says, you can't stop someone uh, from being what they are. That's what they they do. And um, he asks, uh, most of you were evacuated today. Um, do you know what happened? 
do you want to hear the true story? And um, it's quite ironic because he kind of says, you know, you're here to hear the truth and uh, do not be afraid. Today was because of because of him. Now, we know that Exodus back in the day was a, a big uh, fan of following Magneto. You know, he believed in what he was doing and what he was about. And he even tried to carry on that dream for, for many, many years afterwards. Now, I like this bit where he's got the free helmets. So, this is like his bad one. This is like he's a good one. <laughs> and this is like he's a... Well, he's going on a psychopath um, evil. So anyway, they've got inbound, um, and this is the third attack in less than three months. Um, however, this is evil. Uh, Ileana would like to go find on the moon with Cyclops, because he's on the front line doing what he does best. And she says, you know, can I leave this in your capable hands, old man? Because she would like to go. And he says, you know what, I'm even going to dress for the occasion. So he certainly does, and the first scene we get with him is literally firing these spikes into these these alien goons. Um, and uh, meanwhile, we get Exus in the background talking about what a hero does. Um, he faces unwhelming odds, and you know he steps forward to be counted. So anyway, catch up with. Um, well, he thinks it's Mindy, but she said, actually, I'm Sophie, sir. He says, no time for that nonsense. We get a crack on. So he connects to um, this one over here. He says, I'm Sophie. And, you know, she says, no time for that nonsense, sir. And she's uh, with Sage. So we start to see uh, these kind of satellites uh, observing everywhere. So I'm going to crack on down there and they're observing it. So Black Tom is holding his own. Oh, Iceman. Man. Iceman is helping that storm in the north. You can see Scott in the background there. And uh, Magma's joined the fight. So uh, Magneto comes up with a plan that is there some sort of volcano that could uh, be erupted without uh, causing an ecological disaster on the island. And uh, Magma is quite excited to be part of the team and um, obviously um, able to do this because this is one of the big things that she doesn't get to do often enough and she's in comics out of comics in comics out of comics and that drives me nuts drove me nuts with the new mutants the classic series i love the classic series but her and sean were in and out and it was just disappointing so um ice man was up and the instruction from uh, magneto is to um cool them down and um basically all magneto wants is uh they may be brutal but sharp and so they can do their stuff and boom look at that that was a beautiful beautiful scene uh, and he's just firing on all cylinders there. Uh, meanwhile, um, the leader of the, the bad guys, I'm not even going to pretend to know what his name is, is asking Toad, one of uh, Magneto's faithful back in the day, um, who was doing this, but he doesn't give up, and he, he gets his neck snapped. Um, he goes to uh, tell his friend, well, we've got to find this dude, basically. And um, realizes that his friend's dead. And, you know, I brought you up. I created you. And you're, who dares do this? And Magneto's like, I dare. I dare do this. Now, great thing about this is um, the guy's not afraid, which is Brent. Makes for a, a great next scene. And he's basically saying, do you know how many of you that have been arrogant and, you know, thought they were better than everybody else have stood in front of me? And I've conquered all of them. One seed, and I will be there to defeat you. So let's go. So Magneto quite calmly says, I already have, and I've already won. <laughs> he literally starts dropping satellites everywhere. You know, I mean, he tries to get out, it gets it dropped on him again, and then the ships, and they all start dropping down. Um, he says to tell Sage that he apologizes for dropping the satellite once, and to let the respected governments know about them and forward payment, uh, even the ones that they're not meant to know about because they think they're secret enough for them to not know about them. So um, <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Now he says, that send me the moon, I want to finish this. This whole episode, this whole thing, this is, you know, great. And Magneto being at war is brilliant. I love Magneto at war. I love him leading like this. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, um, Exodus asks the children, um, that is what a hero is. Now, tell me, what's your hero's name? And they all start shouting, Magneto, Magneto, Magneto. 
Yes, Magneto, and he is a mutant. And then we end up with this nice spread at the end, which is, um, I always do like uh, nice artwork. So compliments to the artists and who I don't know who that is. So for me, I love the story. Um, I don't think it, it expands, um, it extends on uh, Jonathan Hickman's run other than it shows how they would defend the island and all those things, which is great. The art is nice, very clear, very um, very beautiful, nice details. So I'm going to give this comic, this issue, um, I'm going to give it a, a, a 9 out of 10. Because I just felt like it just flowed. I didn't have to think about it much and I enjoyed it. And I, I, I like enjoying it. Sometimes with Hickman when, when I read his stuff and I'm reading all the other titles. Um, not that he's writing all the other titles but he's head of it. You sometimes have to really pay attention to the details. With this I didn't. It was fun. It was enjoyable. It's exactly what I wanted. So uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. My page is P. Follow me on Twitter at P. No idea what I'm doing there. Tweeting and stuff. And as always, embrace the geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.